really felt proud of this night, Mom, the way you said I would. I didn't drink because of the way you raised me, Mom, so responsible and sweet. I started to drive away, Mom, but as I pulled out into the road, the other car didn't see me, Mom, and hit me like a load. As I lay there on the pavement, Mom, I hear the policeman say, the other guy is drunk, Mom, and now I'm the one who have to pay. I'm lying here dying, Mom. I wish you'd get here soon. How could this happen to me, Mom? My life just burst like a balloon. My breath is getting shorter, Mom. I'm becoming very scared. Please don't cry for me, Mom. When I needed you, you were always there. I have one last question, Mom. Before I say goodbye, I didn't drink and drive, so why am I the one to have to die? Uh, can I get one volunteer, please? One volunteer.
like I would. But today, I have a choice. I can choose to go back and wear this outfit, or one like it, and live in a cell. I can choose to go out and drink tonight, take my little brother with me, who's on a, on a gurney right now. And God forbid something happens to us, or God forbid something happens to one of your guys' families. I have a lot of choices I can make, but I know the consequences. And in my case, if I drink, the consequences ain't good because next time it's about 20, 25 years I'm going to do it. The thing about it is, this is going to be my third presentation that I do. On this poster right here, I have a couple different faces, a couple different things on there. And that's what you see in families. The hardest part is saying goodbye to your people because you don't know if you're going to see them again. On this casket here, that casket there was donated by Martinez Funeral Home. And that is an indigent casket, which most of us are probably going to use. And what I mean by indigent, not to put nobody down, including myself, is I don't have no life insurance. So some drunk driver goes out there and kills me, not only are they going to put me in a hardship, but they're going to put my family more so in a hardship because they don't have the money to bury me. So they're going to go down to a funeral home and they're going to say, you know what, I just lost my husband to a drunk driving accident, whatever it may be. I need a coffee, but I can't pay you. So Mr. Martinez over there is going to say, you know what, this is the coffee I have for indigent people. They don't embalm you, they don't do an autopsy, nothing. They just get your body, they put it inside that coffin, they shoot it shut, and you go somewhere called Phoenix to the unknown man's grave, the indigent grave. Unless you guys can make some kind of reservations at one of these little pretty uh, parks, what I call the parks with the soft lawn cemetery, holy open net, they look like parks. But even then, that costs. How many of us have put away some money and told our parents, here, mom, when I go out tonight, I go party and stuff in case something happens to me, here's some money so you can bury me. Nobody, huh? How many car washes do you guys see? Sad to say, how many car washes do we see every day on the streets of Tucson trying to raise donations for somebody's funeral? It's getting sad, huh? But you know what it is? There's a whole bunch of cowards out there. A whole bunch of cowards. They'll go out there, they get high, they get some snorts of coke, smoke some marijuana, whatever, then they'll go up to the little buddy and say, hey, who do you want me to shoot? Tell me right now, I'll go shoot the suckers. Then they go and they run, they get the gun, they drive by the person, they shoot the person, they get in the car, they take off and they hide. That's when the coward comes out of them. Oh man, the police are going to be looking for me. Oh man, what am I going to do? Where am I going to run? I'm going to go to Mexico. I'm going to go to Canada. But you know what? When they catch you and you go to a yard like the one I had, and two days after you get on my yard, I get your paperwork and I know everything about you. Probably a long time. They're not going to go in there, they're going to stab you, they're going to try to break every rib you have, they're going to break your skull with it. That was my job. All right, we're going to learn. The thing about it, youngsters, I'm telling you guys the truth. I'm not, I'm not making this thing up. Right now, prison is so messy. As soon as you hit a yard, they want to know who you're with. Well, yeah, I'm a Mexican. Who am I supposed to be with? Well, you can pick the biceps, you can pick the Latinos, you can pick this. Hey, wait a minute, wait a minute, what's going on here? And all there was was a whole bunch of knuckleheads decided they were going to do something. What they did is, a few years back, they did a big old sweep. And they picked up all the big shot colors, the OGs, what they call the veteranos. And they took them on and put them in Florence. Drinking or anything. You guys can do it too. Graduation is around the corner. I pray to God that... You know, unfortunately, some of you guys ain't gonna make it. And the only one that's gonna know who those people are, are those the ones that got those plans already made about the big party. So today, I make a decision for myself. I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna let this young man out of my cage right here, and I'm gonna let him share a little bit about what it was like for him just to be in there the few minutes he was in there while I get undressed. I wanna show you guys what I wanna be like today.
sitting down doing nothing. That was ridiculous. I wasn't doing nothing but sitting down, hoping to get free. Uh, I'm sitting in there. It was real tough, you know, like not being able to sit next to my friends and talk. Um, it was just like tiring. I wanted to do some push ups or something. Worked out, hopefully, get buffer like this guy. Um, it was real, I don't know, it's like, you don't have to sit in there for yourself to understand what it's like to be in there. It's not fun, I'll tell you that. I prefer to be like this, like you guys are right now. And my brother, I want him to be like this. And I'm thankful that he's like this today, and not like he was in that bed or in that wheelchair. My younger brother, I'm about, I'm not going to say exactly how many years, but I'm older than him. And I was his role model. And unfortunately, I showed him a lot of things that I wish that I had. But you know what? He's sober today. And he's living a clean life also. And that's what I pray for each and every one of you. You want to say something? Huh? But the thing about it is, this is just a skit. This is just a presentation that we're doing for you guys. But our dreams and our hopes for each and every one of you guys, and girls, is that none of you guys have to go through these. But if you would like today, you guys can make a decision. Do you want that? Do you want that? Or do you want one of those for the rest of your life? Because we don't have another chance. When it happens, it happens like that. And everything changes. Your whole life changes. A lot of us take for granted tomorrow. We say, oh, I ain't worried about tomorrow. You know, everything's going to be okay. Don't take it for granted. Enjoy today. Do the best you can for today. Reach for the stars. And worry about tomorrow when it gets here. Anybody have any questions? <laughs> this one right here is my baby boy, Michael Montanales. This one right here is my second boy, Juan Montanales, Johnny Montanales. I hope something, just a small part, just something small, has sunk in. And if it is sinking in right now, maybe when you go home tonight, tomorrow, whatever, it might click. A lot of people look at this and they say, wait a minute, what's that? Why, why do we gotta have that up here? And that's reality. 